Rhythm. Good evening, amazing people. It's another beautiful moment on the Noble Woman Show. My name is Gabriella, and as you know, we always bring you interviews that would speak to you and motivate you. Don't go anywhere. Be right back. Are you planning a trip or you're going for a holiday with a lot of destinations all over the world? Just decide on where you want to go and see Ryan Travels will take you there. We offer you a visa, air ticketing, tour packages, hotel reservations, corporate travels, and many more. You can contact C Ryan Travels on 0264-623-091 or 0302-408067. You can email C Ryan Travels at c.ryantravels at gmail.com. C Ryan Travels, you pack, we plan. Welcome back from the break. This is still the Noble Woman Show. Call a friend to tell a friend that the show has started. The show is proudly brought to you by C. Ryan Travels. We plan, you park. If you need anything with regards to traveling, your ticketing, your visa, anything you want with regards to traveling, you can contact C. Ryan Travels. C. Ryan Car Rentals. If you want to rent a car for any occasion, whether it's a wedding, a party, and you, you want to travel, anything you need a car for, you can contact C. Ryan Car Rentals. My beautiful hair was styled by Lizzie Beauty Center. You can locate her at Mata Heko opposite one plus one. And you can contact her through the number on your screen. My beautiful earrings was given to me by Joan's Beauty. You can also contact her through the number on your screen. Today on the show, we'll be talking to this beautiful woman. Beautiful woman. <laughs> she's a very good friend and she's so sweet. She has so much life in her, and I believe she has a story to share with us today. So today we'll be talking to Madame Mavis Odru. Madame. <laughs> wow, Gabby. <laughs> I think Mavis is, 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 is okay. Yeah, my madame. <laughs> <laughs> How are you doing? I'm, I'm well, thank you. Yourself? I'm fine. It's been you a look while. beautiful. Thank you. You're looking awesome. You're looking awesome. <laughs> I think I, I, I had to look like this for the noble woman's show. You're a noble woman, so it's like that. Of course. Okay, Mavis. Um, tell us about yourself. Who is Mavis? Okay. Um, Mavis is a mother. A teenage mother, of course. I have a 15-year-old daughter. Okay. And I work as a, a corporate woman in the banking industry. And I operate my own side business in between to support what um, the corporate world can offer. So what, what bank what bank are you working with? I'm with Society General Ghana. I know you'll be asking what I do. I give loans to okay. corporate entities, individuals, and those interested in banking with us. Okay. So um, you were saying you're a mother. How many children do you have? <laughs> I would say I'm a mother of many, but biologically I have one. Who just completed GSS? Married? No. Okay. I'm not. I'm very single. Okay. So how long have you been in the banking industry? I think it's been nine years. I'm in my ninth year. So how are you able to blend working for somebody and um, working for yourself and all? How are you able to co combine all of that? Gabi, let me, let me say this before I answer that. I think we all have 24 hours in a day. And we decide what to do at every point in time. We prioritize what we have to in their order of importance. I have eight hours to work for somebody. The rest of the day is mine. So you can choose to work eight to five and earn, a earn something, go retirement on that. Or you can also decide to build your own retirement whilst you work for somebody. So I work for them while I pay people to work for mine. After I am done 
working for the corporate world. I come back to what I will retire to. That's my business. Whoa. Yes. Whoa. Um, being a mother, how has it been like being a mother? Um, being a mother is interesting. How long have you been a mother? 15 years. Whoa. It's challenging and frustrating. I wouldn't say it's, it's not all rosy because you have to be the mother, you have to be the father. So to say I'm a single mother. And looking at me, looking at my age, looking at my daughter, sometimes you see her and I tell people this is my daughter and they doubt it because you look at her and me, it doesn't match. Why, how, what age do you give her to She's her? 15. And what age? Do I you don't mind saying my age, I'm 35. What age did you give back to her? That By 19, I had her already. Okay. So you have to switch quickly from being a teenager to a mother. At the age of 19? At the age of 19, you have to be, you have to mother yourself and mother your child. Well, that's a serious statement you just made. Yes. Okay. Um, at the age of 19, when uh, you got pregnant, how did your parents take it? What happened? How, how, how did you get pregnant at that age? Fine, 19 in the law, it's, it's okay. But, it's okay. But, but what uh, happened? How did your people take it? Were you not in school? Tell Dabi, us about if it. my 15 year old daughter, plus four, in a four years' time, comes to tell me she's pregnant, obviously I'll flare up. I was actually writing my SSC when I got pregnant, so I have to hide that pregnancy through the SSC. One interesting thing happened in 2004 when we were writing the exams. They cancelled literature, French, and history. And all these three happened to be my major courses. No. That day, my mates who are watching will tell you, I cried as if the whole world was coming to an end because that was a hidden pregnancy nobody knew. I was four or five months pregnant. And I've been able to hide it that far, only for them to cancel the papers. So my thought, what if it's in four months' time? That means I'll be nine months pregnant. And I can't come to write such an exam, or even two months. Fortunately, they did for like a month or two. So I was able to come back to write the exams. When you came back to write the exams, how was your stomach looking like? Did people realize now that you were pregnant? Or Gabby, you were able to hide this, it? This, this is secretary to the scripture union body on campus. And she's pregnant. Um, president of the Christian Friends of Democracy. Organizing Secretary for Leadership International by um, Lighthouse. Nothing will tell you that Mavis would be pregnant. So the people never thought about it. It would never cross their mind. Because mind you, I was staying with my senior house mistress. So if anybody should notice, she should be the first to notice. And she never for once imagined I would be. Because you were the head of the scripture union. You, know? I was not assuming. So, but then I was determined to write the exams with or without the pregnancy because imagine students getting to know this fella that you are pregnant. I couldn't have, have, have been able to go through school with it, so I have to hide it. You know, wearing of the hood, this cardigan with that thing on it, I had to wear it to class and everywhere. I, I, I schooled in Ebri, I don't think secondary school to be precise. And the place is, 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 is kind of cold. So I'm always in cardigan and I'm asthmatic. So if you see me in cardigan, you assume yes, because she's always sick, that's the reason. But the cardigan was like a camouflage for me, covering the pregnancy. The pregnancy. And thanks, thanks to Peppermint, because of the nostalgic feeling I had at the time, I was taking Peppermint at will, so to prevent me from you know, so at what myself. stage in your pregnancy, pre sorry, at, at what stage in your pregnancy did your parents get to know you are pregnant? <sighs> My parents have been out for a very long time. My mom has actually been out for 22 years. So most of the major decisions in life were made by me. So, so you're basically alone when you were a teenager, right? He, yes, I have other siblings. So we have, we have houses in Accra and in Oda. So it's either you assume I'm in Accra or I'm in Oda. I was with a boy throughout. They only saw me when I was eight months pregnant. And the boy's people, how did they take it? I was hiding in his room for the, past, for the first, first five months was on campus. Two months was in his room. Seven months my people got to know I was pregnant. 
Whoa. The only person who, who knew in his family was his grandma. And she was okay with it? The grandma was able to help us conceal it because she was against abortion. Gabby, I didn't want to have the baby. Oh. I was so eager to abort the baby. So why did you keep it? I think... I will not take this from my dad, my, my baby's dad. He talked me into having the baby. And frankly, it's been my, my wisest and the best of choice I have made in this 35 years of my life. Yes. Okay, so um, from that stage, after giving birth, did you drop out of school? Um, did you continue to the university? or you waited for some time, or how was education like for you? Okay, so we wrote the exams in October. I had the baby in March. By March, April, May, June, July, August, by five months, results were out. Results had already been out, universities were out. So I couldn't go because she was barely two months. But when she was five months, I left her to go to the polytechnic. So I went to the polytechnic, right after the polytechnic. When I had to go, I told you my mom is not here. So I actually had to take her to an aunt of my half-sister of my mother, at Wenchi, in the Bruno Hafo region. I remember very well. I took her there. She was still breastfeeding. It was when I had taken her there and I was returning to Accra that I had to think about how I was going to stop the breast milk from flowing. So I came back to Accra, no baby, still had breast milk, had to figure out how to get it to stop. After that, I did, I did the national service. After the, during the national service, I noticed that the time people have, I didn't have that time. Because you're a mother, so you're not only living for yourself. People can, can, can choose to do whatever, but I didn't have much time. Right after that, I went to the university. Okay. During my service, I went to the university. And I paid off through my university myself. I went to a private university. How were you working alongside that? Yes, I was selling jewelry. Okay. This Cooper chain, Cooper chain and all that. You know, I had, I had to, like, I, I buy them. When I'm paid my, my allowance, I just go to Makola, buy them. I had done my internship with Cocoa Board and at some other places. So as soon as allowances come, I just go buy them and go to the offices and give it to them. The, and that's how you were able to take care of your child? Yes. In fact, the father, wait, at the, the time, I wasn't sending anything to my auntie because I didn't have any. But well, the what about the father? Was, your father? was the father of the baby taking care of the child? The father had actually traveled then, and it was the early part of his travel. So it wasn't rosy. But what about his family? They didn't support you? Gabi, in Ghana, we believe in a standard family. But when it comes to money... Nobody's it's, ready it's, to give. It's, it's, it's nuclearly related. So it was, it was my auntie and myself. Okay. So basically, you saw the th child through uh, feeding, clothing and everything. Till what age did, did the father come in? I would say in? the first five years of my daughter's life, my auntie, who I gave the baby to, was there because that five years i had to do three years polytechnic and during the service so the two years i had to go to the university whilst at the university i actually paid my fees monthly i negotiated with regent university the wife of regent university is mrs florence labby i went to them to talk to them that me if you are taking 2100 that is 21 million then i can't pay in full so then they asked me how much I could pay. I said 300. Later, I realized I can't pay 300. So I went back to tell them I can only pay 250 monthly. So whilst others were paying, it was trimester because it was an um, weekend school. I was paying 250 monthly. So as I take my allowance, go to Makola to buy new stuff, I go to them, take the old stuff, and I go to the bank to make payments for my fees. So I even paid fees whilst I was out of the university because oh. it was a long stretch yeah. yes no so what age is the father coming to support or he never came to support if you ask me 
you know, there's this food that you don't like. I always say this, there's this food that you don't like. But once in a while, when you get it, you eat it. That has been the support. In other words, he, in he, other words, he, eats, he supports when he feels as like... As and when he feels he has to come in, he does it. So I would be a liar to say he hasn't been supportive. It's, it's, was there any time throughout this period that you ever regretted, say, ah, again, am I... Gabby, I won't, I won't lie to anybody that, oh, I've always liked to have a baby. I've, there are times I wish I could have done it differently. I had, I had lost relationships. I had been so hard up with money. Sometimes you need to pay fees. You don't have it. I, I, I met a young man who, who liked me a lot and I liked him. We stayed for over two years. And then one day she says, Mamifi, you know what? I had a stepsister and it was hell at home. So I don't think I would want to have a step in my home. So two things. As either your daughter stays wherever she is and then you take care of her or we call up the relationship. Here was I hoping that I would build myself to a point where I can bring her in. So the option is, now when you are able to bring her in, because of marriage you cannot. So of course, I had to choose between my daughter and the guy, and I chose my daughter. So I let that go. So being single, even at this age, sometimes you ask yourself, probably I would have been married if I didn't have this baby. But marriage is not everything. No, wait, wait. You, so you always blame, do you always or sometimes blame yourself for the fact that you are not married because of your child? I want everybody watching, your viewers, to know that it is okay if you have an early childbirth. Because God has plans, unique plan assigned for every other person. But it is also okay to do it right. Probably if I had done it right, I had waited, I had abstained, I had protected myself. Who knows? The story would have been different. So yes, there have been regrets. There are times I wish I didn't. But one look at the baby, compliment from people, and then I just tell myself, it's worth it. So yes, there have been regrets. <laughs> we are still talking to my madam, my very good friend, Mavis Odro. Don't go anywhere, we'll be right back. Welcome to a Yiwa restaurant, gym and spa. Our delivery vans and bikes are always on time. Cater for all events, wedding reception, bridal shower, birthday parties, and all other events. When you want to eat at the right place or the perfect place to have a good health, it's a Yiwa restaurant. Our ultra modern spa with professional massage therapists. Saturday karaoke with DJ Everlasting. Sunday live acoustic music with Ivo Manifest and our local dishes. And cool free in our jacuzzi. Kit Ewa restaurant in Accra behind Achimota Milk. Welcome back from the break. This is the Noble Woman Show, and we are talking to Mavis Odro. The show is brought to you by C Ryan Travels. We plan you hack. If you want anything with regards to traveling, ticketing, visa, and um, the best customer service from a traveling agency, C Ryan Travels is the best for you. C Ryan Car Rentals. If you want to rent a car, the best people to deal with is. C Ryan car rentals. Mavis. Hi Gabby. Your story. It's 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 a, it, in a way it's some some way. I'm wondering how a a young girl 
with a child, would have so much ambition to fulfill in life and made sure, say, like she made nothing stop her because somebody will go through what you're going through or what you went through and that will be the end. She will make that make her feel like she cannot get to where she's supposed to get to. But you, what you are just telling me shows me that you're able to push through. You went to the Polytechnic and uh, you went to the university from there, right? Now, and uh, you have your master's, that's what I know. Yes, I okay. do have my master's and I'm chattering. I, I'm actually a PMP, Project Management Professional. I've just, I've just filled a couple of papers with the CIB, Chartered Institute of Bankers. I would have been chattering by now. <laughs> <laughs> well, so how did you also pull through to achieve your master's? With the, uh, having being a single mother, taking care of a child, financial constraints and all of that, how did you do it? No, I mean, first is the gold factor. My efficiency in all of this, without God's efficiency, will amount to nothing. So yes, I am a strong word person, but I don't leave God out. So I, I derive so much strength from God. Friends who know me will tell you that times it gets so tough, but I don't lose sight of God. He's, he's like, it's like he has to go with me. There's no point where I've said I went there before I thought of God. He has to. Second is the fear to fail. Because if I fail now, I am not only failing for myself. I am failing for my, 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 my daughter as well. So because now she looks up to me. I am, I am first and foremost her mentor, her role model. So whatever I am building, I am building for myself and I'm building for her. And I'm building for actually the family because people had so much trust and, and, and confidence in me. And I felt I let people down. So in that same way, I need to rebuild myself and regain the trust. And also give people the hope that, yes, the fact that you, you I call it an accident, the fact that you probably had that accident doesn't mean that ends it. You can't end it there. So would you say that, no, wait, if I say to you now from your story that giving birth at, an, at, an, at a very early age as a young mother made you achieve what you have now, would you agree with me that your child made you ambitious? Or Naturally, you... I'm, I'm an ambitious person, sorry. But on, on 70, 30, she's 70. My stronger personality is 30. Because, yes, and I know people will be like, oh, she was so brilliant, and then she had a child, and then that ends it for her. That was my fear. But it didn't end it for you. It so made it, you rather become a better person. It made, it, it, it made me want to, for this reason, I cannot fail. For this reason, I cannot feel. That was, that was what you were telling yourself. So, if everybody is stopping along the way, I can't stop. <laughs> Whoa. Do you make the father see the child? He was outside. He was outside. In fact, he, he came into the country just a year, a year ago. So I met him and I brought him home. I brought him home so he knows the way to where his daughter was. Guess what? The whole year. He never visited. He never visited. He only told me he would take the I should he would once pick the girl, the child for visitation. And I said, okay, then take me to where you would take her so that I know where my daughter is. And then he's like, when I was coming, you told me not to bring my wife to your house. So you are not welcome to mine. Now viewers judge. No, no, no. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Besides the fact that you work in a bank, what do you do? I cook on orders. Okay. In fact, I started, I, I did, I started a commercial cooking when I was in Legon, doing my executive master's in finance. And then I, I, I was selling bags and others at the trunk of my car. So when I sold the car, where do I have to put the stuff? I realized that I, I had to give it, I have to sell them so cheaply. So after school, and I had some few monies coming from 
other place. I decide to just get a, a shop where I can have this. And then in course of it, I realized that ladies who come in have kids. So when they come in, they are only coming to buy for themselves. So I said, let me add something of kids. Sometimes a father also brings the, the child to buy something for. So let me add something of men. So it's it's like then it's a big shop. Everything it's a convenient is, shop. It's not big. It's a convenient everything shop. Everything is there. You can get everything. Where is you it can located? Get everything. And I do shito for sale. Oh. Hey, hey, maybe yes. super scar. Oh, Ohima spicy tuna shito <laughs> is also out there. Okay. It's prepared from. You can check out on my uh, my IG page, Ohima underscore Empa underscore nineteen. Okay. It's made from fresh pepe and fresh tuna. Okay. The shop is located at Atomic Down, just close to the Atomic Gateway Hotel. Okay. Yes. May, um, considering what you've been through and all, you're not the only woman who has given birth at, at a very young age. There are women who have gone through that and they didn't survive it or they didn't uh, move or push further to achieve whatever they wanted to achieve. But with the grace of God and with determination, you have been able to get there. What would be your advice to such a woman watching the show? I'll, I'll give you two advice. One, don't give up. At all costs, don't give up. To the young ladies out there, you can wait. Early childbirth is not the best of decisions, but abortion is not an option. And when you have that baby, you owe yourself and that baby a responsibility. You might not make it as big or at the level of which I've gotten to, but in your own strength, you can do something for the child and for yourself. Secondly, be careful of friends. I leave you with Jeremiah 17, 9. Be careful of friends. I'm not to say don't take friends, because you know what, Gabby, do you know we have good friends and we have bad friends? So it can only take God to let you know who a friend is. So if possible, pray even about your friends. Because I, I, I saw it at some part of the Bible that, and David said, is there anybody in the house of Jonathan that I may do good to? It was, that came out of a, a, a good friendship. So in memory of a good friendship, even in his death, there was, there was something good to be done for a descendant of Jonathan. And in that same way, a friend can betray you. I say this that the poison, the kiss of a fake friend is more poisonous than the venom of the most poisonous snake. So you have to be careful. Careful about the kids you have now don't expose them to friends. And just be yourself, be strong and be hopeful. There's always a new day. There's always a new dawn. And the sun will always shine. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming to my show. You're welcome and thanks for having me. I hope I met you and then again last time. Of course, as many times as you. <laughs> Maybe in some few years to come. I might be an MD of some bank. Who, who uh -huh. So then you come on the show again. <laughs> <laughs> it's been an Maybe amazing... the next episode, we we'll have it in my MD's office. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's been a, a great time here today with Mavis on the show. Um, she's a banker, she's an entrepreneur, and she's done well for herself. As a young teenage mother growing up to where she is now, God has been good to her. I hope you learned a lot from this episode on the show, because I did. Um, I want to acknowledge my sponsors, C. Ryan Travels and C. Ryan Car Rentals for their support. I want to thank them. I want to appreciate Lizzie Beauty Center for making me look this good this evening on the show with uh, using my natural hair to do something beautiful for me. Lizzie Beauty Center. You can locate her at Matcha Heco, opposite one plus one, and you can call her through the number on your screen. Joan's Beauty for my earrings. I want to say thank you, Joan, for giving me this beautiful earring. Thank you so much today for staying with us on the Noble Woman Show. My name is Gabriela. See you same time next week. Bye bye.
Thank <laughs> you.